I am at the garden. Look at these beautiful poppies. Wow. This one is working on opening up right now. Same with this one and this one. Wow. It's a very gloomy day today. Kind of rainy. I think it's going to rain a little bit later. So these poppies are not going to last long. So sad. Here is a crookneck squash. I don't know what happened to it, but it's really funny looking. The other ones seem to be doing just fine. Here is the gray zucchini. The bottom half looks strange. I don't know why. Oh, wow. We have another one right there. That's great. Here are the long beans. Still getting little bites taken out of them. Should probably definitely, oh, definitely harvest these today. Look at the size of these Swiss chard leaves. Looks like I gotta get to that today. Oh wow, look at this nasturtium. It is so, so beautiful. I have only seen red ones. I've never seen an orange one. Wow, so pretty. The day we are going to be making kimchi with this beautiful napa cabbage that i harvested i don't even know last week maybe i am so excited to get it out of my refrigerator i currently have two of these in there they're taking up both bottom drawers and i'm simply running out of room every day like i'm shuffling things around every single day so we got it we got to get moving here we got to preserve some cabbage and i am going to be adding in the daikon that we also harvested. I figured I would try to get rid of these little ones first. We also have a carrot, green onions, and garlic. These are from H Mart. So I bought these and I'm gonna go grab an onion from the garage and we're gonna add that as well. So that's really exciting. Three things that I grew myself. Love that. Also, I'm gonna expose myself a little bit here. In like 2019, I had a YouTube channel and it's gone. I deleted it. It didn't really go anywhere. I was in a weird time in my life. I don't have any of the videos, but I did find some footage earlier this year. This is the only footage that I have and it's me making kimchi and I never posted it. I just filmed it and put it in a folder and that was it. What I thought was so interesting is that one, I'm a completely different person. It's like so, so different. And two, I noticed that my voice was deeper for some reason and I don't really know why. My partner brought up that maybe it could be because I was so depressed back then and I knew that I was depressed but I didn't know how depressed I was. That could be why or I just simply have no idea. So I think that I'm going to use that footage. I'm gonna edit it and I'm gonna put it at the end of this video. So if you wanna see what I looked like five years ago, you can check that out at the end. I'm not sure what I have of it, but I'll just edit what I have and see what comes from it. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy it. Let's start making some kimchi. First, I'm going to cut it into some squares and wash it and spin it just because I have no idea what is in the layers of this cabbage. I'm kind of scared. I'm probably gonna find some bugs. There's probably so much diatomaceous earth. <laughs> so I am gonna cut it on a different cutting board that I usually use and make sure I wash them really, really well. Oh, I think I need gloves. Okay. Thank you. 
I have washed and weighed all of the cabbage. I had nearly three pounds. The recipe calls for three pounds. I will link the recipe that I'm using in the description, of course. Right now I'm gonna be salting the cabbage with a little bit of water. I'm gonna let it stand for two hours. And every 30 minutes, I'm gonna go mix up the cabbage just to make sure everything is salted evenly. That might not make a lot of sense to add water when you're trying to also extract water, but it's kind of like a brine and it will help tenderize the cabbage and break down the fibers a little bit, as well as let the cabbage release some of the liquid that it's holding. While the cabbage is doing its thing, I am cutting up the rest of the vegetables that are gonna go in to the kimchi. I'm gonna be using onions that I grew myself. I weighed them out already and I'm excited to chop into one of these actually. I decided to go with some of the smaller onions instead of the bigger ones. I figured maybe the smaller ones go bad faster. So that was kind of my thinking, but I'm not really sure if that's true. The recipe calls for one medium onion. I just grabbed a whole bunch of the smaller onions that will equal kind of a medium onion. <laughs> so that's, that's what I did there. I am now making the paste for the kimchi. This consists of sweet rice flour and some vegetable stock. This is the brand that I'm using of sweet rice flour. I got it at H Mart, which is an Asian grocery store. Mochiko is sweet rice flour and it's different than normal rice flour. It's also called glutinous rice flour, which just means it's sticky. It doesn't mean there's gluten in it. There's no gluten in any rice. It just simply means sticky. This is also what you can make mochi out of, which is, one of my favorite snacks ever. Once this starts bubbling, I'm gonna add sugar and then I'm gonna heat it up until it's thick and translucent. Continuing with making the paste for the kimchi, I'm adding water to this blender, as well as the onion and the garlic, sugar, salt, and the rice flour mixture that I made on the stove. And then I'm gonna blend it up until it is a puree. And then it calls for one cup of gochugaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes. I'm not sure I can do that much because, well, I like spicy things, but I need minimal spicy because of my stomach. So I'm gonna add in, I don't know, whatever looks right. I think that was about three tablespoons, maybe. It smells kind of spicy. So, you know, that is the good thing about making your own kimchi is that you can customize it however you want, whatever vegetables you want, whatever level of spiciness you want. I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm not brave enough to taste it. Ugh, I feel like it would be just, it's just too much for me to taste because of the onion. It's like burning my eyes. So I'm gonna say that's good, but I kind of want to add in just a sprinkle more. Also, I know this does not look like the picture that I'm following from the recipe. I think mine's a little too goopy. I don't really know why, but we're going with it. Okay, it is glove time once again. The cabbage is done. I rinsed it three times. I squeezed out a lot of the excess moisture and I am gonna mix this into here. This is carrot, daikon, green onion. This is the jar that I'm gonna pack everything in. I'm first going to be taking the paste puree goop that we made and mixing it in with everything in here. Just like we did with the sauerkraut, I am going to pack it in here with my tamper and try to get that liquid above the solids. And yes, I absolutely agree with you. This is the strangest looking kimchi ever. And I think it's the color. <laughs> it's not bright red. It's like a weird orange color, but you know what? We're rolling with it. I am sealing it with this lid. This is from Ball and it has just like this little rubbery gasket that can let gases out, but of course nothing can get in. So I'm gonna put that on there and I'm also going to place it on a tray because once this thing starts fermenting, it most likely will bubble up and come out of this little thing up here and spill all over the place. So you need to make sure you put it on a tray. There we go. Kimchi ready for fermentation. I think I'm gonna ferment it for a couple days. It's just until it's sour enough for you. So however you like your kimchi, that's when you can stop fermenting it. So look at it after a couple days, taste it. If it's good, pop it in the fridge.
This is what the kimchi looks like the next day. Ooh, <laughs> there's lots of liquid on top and it has a little bubbling. That means the fermentation is happening currently and it smells so amazing. So garlicky, oniony, a little sour. Oh, so good. It's most likely going to bubble out of this and go down onto the tray. So very important to have a tray underneath your kimchi. One thing to say, we always buy loose leaf tea from Sprouts and they recently stopped selling that. I don't know why, but my girlfriend was in there the other day and she was asking the guy who was restocking the bulk herbs and spices and he said there was a bag back there and to name her price and he'll sell it to her. So she grabbed this one right here for $2.99. It's a big bag. It's from Frontier Co-op and I looked it up and they sell the tea on that website. So that's where I'm probably we're gonna purchase the rest of my tea but also this bag was $52 that's how much this bag is to buy if you want to buy a pound of it and we got it for $2.99 so that's pretty great <laughs> wow look at this mammoth sunflower it is so giant Wow. It's been like a couple days since I've been back to the garden. I think the last time I went to the garden was Friday. It was raining for the last two days. So let me show you around and see what's going on. We had some really, really gusty winds and the corn looks like it has been knocked over slightly. I don't think it's broken. I'm not really sure what I should do about this. This one has a corn in it, but it does not look like it like fruited that well at all. This one has a corn right here, and I think I picked this one last week. I think this corn right here needs to be harvested today, so I think I'm gonna do that for sure. I hope I didn't let it go too long. And there's also this one that's pulling away from the stalk. So I'm wondering if I should harvest this one as well. Look at these two beauties. Oh my gosh, they're so stunning. They're perfect. Wow. This tomato plant needs to be staked up majorly and I'm sure some of the other ones do as well. Here is the yellow crookneck squash looking good. I might harvest that today. I might prune back some of the squash plants as well just to keep them tidy. Here is the gray zucchini. This one looks weird. That one is looking amazing. Beautiful calendula. Wow. We have some long beans to harvest. Oh this one looks like it was bitten off of the plant so great. Lovely. And in here we have this eggplant, which I'm so scared that something is gonna be chomping on it. I hope not. It's looking so beautiful right now. Yet again, the Swiss chard is just gigantic. <sighs> wow. The cucumber plant is starting to vine out a little bit. I don't see any cucumbers yet. Just a lot of flowers. So hopefully soon we'll see a cucumber. Oh, my tiger violas are on their side. No idea why. These ones look so beautiful. Wow. I like to stake up my squash plants because I don't have a lot of room in this garden. So to make everything a little bit easier for me and the plant, I usually cut any leaves that are below the fruit and then attach the main stem to a stake to grow it vertically. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Do we see this right here? That looks like a cantaloupe. It's so fuzzy. Oh my gosh. What? Wow. <laughs> Maybe one right there as well. I think that that is it so far. Oh my gosh. I'm going to protect that cantaloupe with my life. So this is the corn that I'm going to harvest today. I'm going to peel back the layers. There is an earwig. Okay. Well, I'm going to peel back the layers and I'm going to see if it's ready first. You never know what you're going to find when you're looking in the corn. Could be a worm, an earwig, who knows? 
Oh, that is ready. Oh, the earwigs love the corn. Phew. We do have a couple over here. There's one that has no silks. I think this is it for the corn today. I'm just gonna go around and take off some of these outer layers and cut the bottom a little bit more. I'm hoping removing some of the outer layers will help get rid of the earwigs that are hiding. try this kimchi. I think it's been like three days. It is actively bubbling up here and I'm gonna see if it's sour enough. I'm not sure what I'm going to see when I open this. I think it's gonna be very, very full. Oh yeah. I think this is a piece of cabbage. Yes, it is. And I'm gonna try it, see how it is. This is a piece of green onion. Hmm. It is sour. I think it needs to do one more day. It's not quite fermented enough for me and it's very salty. I don't, I mean, I don't know if that's gonna go away with fermenting more. I don't think that's what happens, but it is pretty salty. <laughs> Other than that, I had a really good flavor, but I think it just needs one more day. going to be making kimchi now because because I bought this really amazing cool fermentation box the other day at H Mart and here I'll get down here sorry it's been a really long time since I've made kimchi so I wanted to make some and since I got this amazing box let's do it the recipe I'm using is from minimalist baker I just needed uh, you know the like kimchi sauce recipe uh, like the spice stuff but you can use it like any vegetable you want I'm gonna be using Napa, carrot and daikon and like some green onion and ginger or garlic, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of lightly go through how I make kimchi. Hi, I put you on a tripod so you can actually see what I'm doing. So kimchi usually uses fish sauce and the minimalist baker recipe has a little recipe for vegan fish sauce. So that is what I made right here. It just smells like soy sauce and pineapple juice, but you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll go with it, we'll go with it. For the kimchi sauce, I start by cutting the germ off the garlic, adding the garlic to a blender, peeling and chopping fresh ginger, adding one small white onion, and a half cup of red chili flakes, more or less, I guess, depending on the taste. I am going to add a little bit because I don't want it to be super duper spicy. Doesn't that look amazing? It smells so freaking good. I really want to taste it. Yeah. Good, a little bit spicy, garlicky, kind of burns. I give it a thumbs up. Here is my carrot and daikon mixture. Calvin, you want a carrot? Yeah, right here. This is my salted cabbage. I rinsed it in cold water and strained it thoroughly so it's not super wet. I'm going to mix this mixture in with this mixture and then I'm gonna put it all into my sterilized fermenting vessel. This is my kimchi. There is some liquid in there. I don't know if you can see it. Usually you want liquid to be covering the entire thing so it doesn't spoil. So I'm going to add a little bit of water so it covers the vegetables. Okay, so I just covered it in some plastic wrap so no oxygen can touch my delicious 
kimchi and now I'm gonna put on this lid. It has a gasket so no air can get in. It is now sealed. I am so dang excited for this. Oh my goodness. Okay so the recipe says to let it sit at room temperature for 36 hours so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw it in probably that cabinet right there and let it hang out. After 36 hours you pop it in your fridge to let it continue fermenting. Excuse me, what is your problem? Bye bye, see you in like a day and a half or so. Saba! Hey guys, it's Saturday morning and I just wanted to show you what my kimchi looks like after like a day and a half of fermenting, not in the fridge, but just at room temp. Oh wow, so. I had to keep it clipped with three clips instead of all four because it was building up a ton of pressure. Also, my entire house smells like a ton of garlic. Like the whole house smells like spicy garlic and this smells amazing, so that's cool. But yeah, I am gonna pop it in the fridge now and let it uh, ferment in there, do the rest of its fermentation, I guess, in the fridge. I'm trying to peel it open, there we go. Okay, and that's it.